while the screen is uh, warming up, I thought that uh, I'd give you a quick overview of how we got started, Ed, myself, and Robert with these stars. I think that uh, all my life I've enjoyed experimenting, and that's what amateur radio is all about. And I got started uh, uh, working on repeaters back in about 1982. I joined a group that was called the Papa System. Uh, they, had, they had a 220 repeater on the north end of the San Fernando Valley. And I was, probably had my license for a couple of months. Ended up uh, joining them and uh, went out and bought a 220 radio. And I lived in Culver City and I keyed up. I couldn't even get into it. So that was my first experience with amateur radio. I joined a club and I couldn't even use the repeater. So about uh, 25 years, well, let me back up a little bit. Uh, we, uh, I ended up, uh, the owner of the repeater uh, decided to sell it or give it to about 12 of us. And when he gave it to us, a week later there was a horrific windstorm and blew the tower down and that's how I got started in amateur radio. 25 years later, <laughs> we're here today, and now we're playing with D-Star. But in between that period of time, we put together 14 analog repeaters, and every time we've seen a mountain, we planted a repeater. And uh, so we now, the Papa system has approximately 14 analog repeaters, and we have planted, uh, a lot of the 14 analog repeaters we cover from uh, the Pacific Ocean to the Mexican border, north to Pismo Beach, and to the Arizona border. And these are link repeaters. The reason I'm bringing that up, because the technology of uh, D-Star is completely different from link repeaters. So the Papa system decided to uh, put up these uh, D-Star repeaters, and last year, Ed, myself, and Robert bought the first D-Star repeater. That repeater was put into a, a operation about four, let's see, about the first of the year. Currently, we have six proposed D-Star repeaters uh, that start from the north end of the, uh, oh, there you go. Uh, the, the repeaters are uh, start at the north end of the San Fernando Valley, uh, which is D1, it goes to D4, and we recently uh, put one up at Palomar. We uh, took over the responsibility of the Woodson D-Star repeater, and we were hoping to have that system up and running on the gateway. Uh, we'll talk about the gateway later on on the PowerPoint presentation that Ed's going to make. But I want to leave you with, with these thoughts. One of the important parts of amateur radio is to have fun and have a learning experience. And in our group, we found that by allowing or getting the membership to participate in the maintenance of the systems and building the systems, you build a very strong core of individuals that become very te technically knowledgeable about the products and the repeaters. So we, we try to, we have probably well over 180 members. Out of the 180 members, we have 22 that are Elmers. So when we have new members come in, we try to coach them on, on and they were how to coach them on how to uh, work on the repeater systems. But anyway, let's get on with it, what you're here for. I, I've listed about nine items that I think make D-Star repeaters very different. And, and this is the reason why Ed and Robert and a lot of us decided to go in this direction. You can have two digital repeaters in the same bandwidth as allocated for analog repeaters. In crowded communities like we have here, it makes a lot of sense that, to allocate a segment of the frequency for D-Star repeaters, we can expand them. 
The quality of the audio is far superior with no noise. The coverage area is 15 to 20 percent better with one tenth the power. We hope to later on tonight, if we don't run out of time, we're really running late. Uh, by the way, Ed drove up from, uh, from Los Angeles to make this presentation with us. Hey, we want to give you an example. At Palomar, we have a repeater, a D-Star repeater, and an analog repeater. And uh, we'd like to demonstrate the difference between the quality of the audio. The analog repeater is running 100 watts with a 10 dB gain antenna, about 70 uh, watts out of the cabinet. The D-Star repeater, which you'll hear later on today, or this evening, is running one-tenth of the power of that, and it sounds far superior. So I hope we have time to demonstrate the difference between the two. We can simultaneously transmit voice and text messaging and on the same frequency, and we hope to demonstrate that in a little bit. You can contact any amateur on the D-Star Gateway by simply programming in his his call into your radio, which means there's about 70 D-Star repeaters to date all over the world. You program in the individual's call. If he's keyed up a repeater in New York, you'll be able to, by simply putting out his call, transmitting his call in one of the memory channels, you'll be able to make contact with him. When we get Woodson on the gateway, uh, we'll be able to do uh, DAPRS through the uh, D-Star Gateway. D-Star radios are a little bit more expensive, but if you're going to purchase an analog radio, you should at least consider it. For $100 more, you can go D-Star. The uh, 800H ICOM will give you dual band capability, 50 watts on 440, and at HRO you can pick that up for about 100 for, for 450 bucks. Time permitting, we'll demo the uh, the audio quality of D-Star text messaging and and D A P R S. Out of curiosity, how many members here are have uh, D-Star radios currently? There's about three or four. What I for any of you that have not experience uh, the coverage of uh, what we call Woodson uh, and uh, Palomar and we're going to have one on Otai. So we will blanket the area in the San Diego area. The And I'll leave you with this thought and then I'm going to give it over to Ed to do the PowerPoint. <coughs> but the, the difference, and that's why I wanted to tell you a little bit about the PAPA system, the difference between analog link systems and D-STAR and it gives you the capability of directing your call for one person, not tying up 14 repeaters or 20 repeaters on a link system. You simply put the call sign of the individual you want to talk to, and you're, and you're able to talk to them. Like on what we call now the PAPA system, which will have five D-Star repeaters that will give us coverage from Me the Mexican border all the way in to Ventura County. Anybody that's listening to any repeater will be able to, you'll be able to make contact with them and then only tie up two repeaters. Where the individual is and where you're calling from. So those are nine of the features that I think are outstanding over analog repeaters. So hopefully we'll have time to demonstrate. With that, we're going to ask Ed to do the PowerPoint presentation.